Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another episode of 31 Days of Halloween. Today, we are talking about Broken Shells by Michael Patrick Hicks. Right up front, I need to let you guys know that Michael, I consider Michael a friend of mine. Uh, that's another reason why I haven't read too much of his stuff, because I know how people, uh, people think uh, that a, a bias comes along with any time you read a friend's work, when with me, um, especially, I tend to be harder on my friends than I am strangers. Uh, I've, I've proved this time and time again. If you've been a fan of the channel uh, at any length of time, you will have seen me give negative reviews to people that I consider friends. Um, this is not a negative review. This is a mostly positive review. I have one big chunk of criticism to talk about, um, but otherwise it's going to be a positive review. I like the book a lot. I'm giving it four stars. I had, like I said, one big issue with it, and that's why it's not five stars. But uh, um, I just want to let you guys know that up front, he's also a Patreon of mine, a supporter of mine, Patreon supporter of mine. Um, so the, all that stuff up front and out of the way, let's just go ahead and jump into the review. This is another book that I bought ages ago that I just never got around to reading. Once again, for those reasons, I, I tend to stay away from my friend's stuff because I am hypercritical of them. Uh, with this one, I'm glad I chose to read it, but it's another ebook that I picked up. I'm trying to put a dent in my massive 3,000 plus uh, horror library on my Kindle because I just don't care too much about these ebooks. But I've spent all this money uh, accumulating all of these uh, books on sale. That's usually why I grab them. Either they're on sale or they're they're just marked down cheap. Uh, they're just cheap to begin with. Um, uh, this this book is about a uh, a young man named Antoine Dewitt, who is down on his luck. He has just gotten fired from his job. He comes home, and his wife says they have a winning ticket to a dealership that is worth five thousand um, dollars. He doesn't believe it. It's too good to be true. That kind of thing. His wife talks him into it, and he ends up going up to the dealership to get his five thousand uh, dollars. The dealership is run by a man who has many, many secrets, or not ran, I don't know, I, it's his family's dealership, but um, there's something beneath the dealership, and uh, Antoine is captured, and he is put down into this pit where he comes across monsters. Um, I am a huge fan of the monsters in this book. I love a good creature feature. I love a good alone in the dark feature. I love all that stuff, and it just checked every box for me. I love the design of the creatures. I don't know if uh, I don't want to spoil where they where they supposedly came from or anything like that. Not even with uh, the culture or the uh, the belief system or any of that stuff. Um, I'm not sure if they actually do exist in that belief system. I'm not sure if Michael uh, made it up himself. Either way fantastically done fantastically done i loved every bit of that um the it is michael writes brutality very very well um i, I get a plus for the brutality because people are just torn to shreds even the main character is so broken and abused by the end of the book you're like this i can't believe this poor man is still going and i love it when the main character is is used and abused to the point of you know either death or or be you know or up to the point of death that kind of thing um I cannot harp on the creatures enough. I think they were very, very cool and very well done. Horrific, utterly horrific, and I love the ending. Um, in fact, I am really glad that my uh, my novella Fairy Lights. If you've read Broken Shells and Fairy Lights, or either one of them, you'll understand where I'm going with this. I'm really glad that my novella Fairy Lights is no longer available. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, it was at one time, uh, but the publisher went under, and I just chose to never republish it. Um, but I'm really glad it, is, it it isn't because I don't know if Mike published his first or I published mine first, but it's pretty much the exact same ending, and they are both creature features. Um, so, Mike, if you're watching this, man, I I, I didn't read your book. I promise. <laughs> it's, it's just one of those things, dude. Um, anyways, so I had a blast with it. Loved the ending, um, especially the last chapter, the very last chapter. Uh, that that was especially well. I was like, oh, okay, I know what's about to happen. It was it was cool. I like that. Now for my one complaint, and I could be wrong, but I've had people. I've, I've talked to 
different experts about this thing. At one point in time, there is a camera that is watching the pit, you know, down in the dark. Um, and it is made very clear that, you know, there is no way for the creatures to get out. They might tunnel out, so on and so forth. What I'm getting at here is there is absolutely no light source. It is cave dark in this place but yet the night vision cameras work. And I know it's important to the story that the night vision cameras work so that they can see what's going on down there, but with absolutely no light, all night vision does is enhance light that is available. If you go down into the pits of a cave, night vision is not going to help you because there's absolutely no uh, illumination whatsoever for it to magnify. It only magnifies light, it does not create light in this situation. Um, that kind of took me out of the story. Um, now, if there is newer technology I don't know but the last time I researched this was about five years ago um, in fact I didn't even know about it until an editor brought it up to me in one of my stories when I wanted to use it in a cave system and it's like it's not gonna work unless there's some kind of light down there um, but that is that's my only complaint really um, other than a handful of typographical errors I would say I probably found 10 um, in a novella that's maybe a hundred pages long um, and that gets a pass for me um, I, it wasn't like one every single chapter. That's usually what I, I mean, you get like one error for, per every 20, 30, no, sorry. One error per every five pages for me kind of deal. Um, but this is more like one error every 10 pages or so. Um, and it's just simple stuff. It's not anything that, you know, most casual readers are going to see it and they're going to keep on passing on, but there were enough that I did note them and I wanted to note them in the review. Um, because if I don't, people are bound to come back and go, Oh my God, this thing was riddled with errors, even if they found two or three. So I'm just, I'm, I'm making, uh, maybe making, uh, Michael aware of this. It's whatever. Um, but, uh, oh, also, I did turn in, uh, Michael, if you're interested, I don't know how they handle this, but uh, there is a report typo error on uh, Kindle, and I went ahead and used that for each and every one of them, so if, you, if you're sitting back cussing, like, who in the world is doing it? It was me. I'm sorry. Uh, I found out later that they could possibly take the book down until you fix it, so I apologize if that happens. I didn't know. It just said report content error. Um, but anyways, so uh, have you guys read... Broken Shells by Michael Patrick Hicks. If you have, let me know down there in the doobly-doo whether or not you loved it, whether or not you hated it, whether or not you felt meh about it. But if you felt any of those things, let me know why so that we can have a discussion. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another episode of 31 Days of Halloween. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!